How much of your own experiences get infused into your show and do you hesitate before writing these things in? People approach me thinking that I've been through all of that. Absolutely, mm. they do. <laughs> yeah, and they're always like really disappointed that I'm married. <laughs> and stuff. I'm like, oh, 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 you are fucking everyone. Like, no, want to be a good story. <laughs> what was really authentic at the beginning, when I and I wrote as originally a play, was the humour and yeah. the and the and the turns of phrases that that particular character would have, because that's the kind of stuff that was cracking me up at the time and the stuff that I hadn't really um, seen that much in a character. And I, and I also knew that that's a character I wanted to play. And that, so that humour, the jokes, and a lot of the kind of anecdotal stuff I had amplified from my own life or stuff that had funny or embarrassing had happened in my own life and then weaved a dramatic story out of that. But the, at the beginning, it was like, that happened to me, that was embarrassing, that happened to me, that was embarrassing, all on <laughs> post-it notes. And then cranked <laughs> them all up so they were like painfully mm -hmm. humiliating and then found a story within them. So was that like, you can have my number or what are we... Yes. Yeah, I guess that's a yes. Oh, my God. Great. Um, OK. <sighs> that. No. And I'll be sure to treat you like a nasty little bitch. Um, that was a joke. Oh, no, Sorry. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> OK. <laughs> a lot of the time when I was being asked about the show, uh, it was through the prism of feminism, which yes. was one... It was a very important part of that show for me. and the confusion the character felt, but it was like one strand in the story of this character. Mm -hmm. And there were mm -hmm. so many other themes in it that I was grappling with and so many ways that I was trying to fuck with the genre and all that kind of stuff. But it was always that, just always that, always that, always that. And um, I just started feeling like I was suddenly being moved into a different position, that it was, wasn't so much that I was a writer, it was that I was a feminist writer. Yeah. Which I am, of course I am, and I'm a feminist person, but it was, that became a category of writing. And, um, and I felt that, made me want to have three glasses of wine and rail at a reporter. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's not, because that's not what I'm trying to do. And I'm proud of the fact that, that that's how my work is being uh, received. Yes. But it's not... Uh, but I do think, especially with female writers who, who write honestly about women and, and their experiences, I feel like it's like, oh, that's a feminist show. Mm. Mm -hmm. but, you know. Yeah. Maybe do you feel, is there a sort of strike while the iron is hot mentality you've taken yes. on? Yes. <laughs> a, a little new Just say yes to everything. <laughs> Any questions, anything. But how um, do you assess what makes sense for you to take on, what makes sense for you to act in versus uh, write and create? I was writing uh, Crashing when Fleabag got uh, commissioned, and that was very exciting, but I knew that I was going to have two shows in one year, which was, and that was going to be in both of them at the same time, and that problem about oh feeling God. like you're going to... I was writing and crashing, but going, that's a joke. Should I? Who should I joke? You know, and like, that kind of thing was really painful. Because then I was like, am I giving it to that show? Because I love that show more. And I was like, no, it just... So that was, that was kind of, um, um, you know, a nightmare problem. <laughs> there are only showrunners watching this, yeah. right? So we can complain about that. We can complain about that. It was just so hard. <laughs> um, no, but that thing of spreading yourself thin, then you realise that actually the work that you're doing, especially as you want to put your heart into it and you know that it's only going to be good if it feels authentic to you and that you actually care about it and you can stand next to it and say, this is something I really believe in. And I don't feel like you can have that all the time. And so after those two shows came out, I did... Uh, and other, other things started coming up, and it was actually a show, because I'm working on a show at the moment called Killing Eve, which Wait, I... Wait, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> Killing Adam. You can have, you can have that. Um, and that was, luckily, a show that I had started working on before Fleabag uh, had come out or anything, so it still felt like something I was at, uh, attached to before, so my heart was sort of still in it in that way. So the so I haven't really had time to think of like what to do. Same network <laughs> after that. That's yeah. BBC America. Okay. Yeah. What is the craziest thing that's ever happened to you during a pitch meeting? I auditioned for Downton Abbey. Oh, really? oh. Uh, yeah. Oh. It was hard. Um, no. Subtlety, subtlety. <laughs> <laughs> I went in. And I remember it was just, it's quite a serious part. And uh, I'd really been auditioning for comedy for uh -huh. a couple of years, and I was really thrilled to come in for this part. And I gave this really heart heartfelt audition, and when I finished, they were like, we had no idea she was so fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Judd Apatow. I'm David Mandel. I'm Elizabeth Moss. I'm Kevin Bacon. Billy Bob Thornton. Thanks for watching The Hollywood Reporter on YouTube. And sitting through the laundry detergent commercial it took to get here. Make sure to subscribe for more videos from The Hollywood Reporter right here. Cool.